What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm gonna show you how to use voice recognition with an Arduino. Hello robot. All on. Light cycle. Light one off. Light two off. Light one on. Turn off the lights. Now, at the core of this project, obviously, is the voice recognition module. And there are so many different modules with so many variations by so many vendors out there that it's best to do a project like this where you define your actual needs from the module and then start looking for a module that can do that. For me, I want a module that wouldn't rely on an internet, PC, or cloud service connection, wouldn't need to call an external API, and so I was looking for a completely offline voice recognition module that would be capable of setting custom command words. And that's how I found the DF Robot Gravity Offline Voice Recognition Module. So far, I love this thing, it's been crazy easy to use, and I will leave a link to it below. It can communicate over I2C or UART, which if you don't know what that means, just basically means it'll be compatible with any microcontroller, Raspberry Pi, PC, any app that you probably want to use to talk to this thing, this will support. UART in particular is basically using two digital pins on an Arduino as if they were a serial connection, very similar to what we did with the Bluetooth module on this channel a few videos back. And the whole wiring for this module just requires five volts DC, a ground connection, and then two digital pin connections to simulate your soft serial connection. And a crazy part about this module, which I love, is you do a lot of the actual programming for your application just by using your voice and talking to the module. So let's do some of that now. Let's start by deleting out anything that might already be in there so you guys know I'm doing it live with you. The default way to wake this thing up as soon as it's powered on is just by saying, hello robot, and then if you want to clear it all out, make sure you're starting fresh. Just say, I want to delete. Do you want to delete the learn wake word or command word? And if you want to clear it all, you just say, delete all. Deleting successful. Okay, so first thing we'll do here is I don't really like having to say, hello, robot, every time I want to talk to it. So let's pick a name for it. Uh, maybe you want to rip off one of the most common uh, smart voice applications, or maybe you want something custom. I don't want to give too much away about what's coming on the channel, but I'm going to do some pretty cool stuff in my garage workshop with this. So I'll call mine Gary, short for Garage Electronic Assistant. Hello, robot. How can I help? Learn wake word. Learning now. Be quiet. Please say the wake word to be learned. Gary. Gary. Learning successful. Please say it again. Gary. Okay. Learning completed. So now, once it goes to sleep and the blue light on it goes away, I should be able to use that call word to wake it up instead of having to say the original one. So when the blue light goes away, it's no longer listening, and we can check and see if it took. Gary. And then the blue light comes back on. So that is super easy to just change your wake word right there. And again, if any of the specific things you need to say to it ever get confusing, just know that their website has extensive documentation on all of the command words, how to set all of this, how to reset all of it, all of the fixed command words and all of the custom command words. So for example, there are 121 commands built into it that you can't change. And you're not gonna use most of those, like set to specific colors, or daylight mode, moonlight mode, color mode. You can use those if you want in your program, and we'll talk about how in the next section. But there are 17 customizable commands, which are where you get to set up whatever specific thing you want to say to the module. So for my sample project here, I have three LEDs, a blue, red, and green LED, and I just want to create custom commands that will let me turn them all on in a sequence all off and then each of them individually on and off and then also some sort of fun like light show light cycle at the end so let's take a look at how quick and easy to set custom commands on this it is as well Ari yes, learning command word All on. Learning successful. Please say it again. 
All on. Learning successful. Please say it again. All on. Okay. Learn the first command successfully. Please say the second command to be learned. All off. All off. All off. Light one on. Light one on. Light one on. Light one off. Light one off. Light one off. Light two on. Light two on. Light two on. Light three on. Light three on. Light three on. Light two off. Light two off. Light two off. Light three off. Light three off. Light three off. Light cycle. Light cycle. Light cycle. Okay. Learn the ninth command successfully. Please say the tenth command to be learned. Exit learning. Okay. The learning mode is exited. Okay, so even if that seemed a little tedious having to repeat each command three times, it was still super easy to do, just a little bit time consuming. And honestly, the fact that you can do that level of customization and programming from a $20 module this size is absolutely nuts. And we need to take a look at how to use those commands we just created to do things with our Arduino. And so we're about to jump into the coding, but I wanna to touch on a few features of the module that I forgot to bring up right in the beginning. There's a dip switch to specify whether you're communicating over UART or I2C communications. And there's a second dip switch here, which allows you to switch between speaker one and speaker two. And speaker one is the built-in speaker that comes with the module. But if you want a real high quality output, you can hook it up to an external speaker and that's what switch uh, speaker two will do if you flip the dip switch into that position. It's also kind of nice if you want to be able to give your board commands and you don't want to hear the voice back at all. You can put this into speaker two position and just not hook an external speaker up and then you can give it commands and you just won't get any audio feedback. So if you don't like the voice, you just want to be able to give it vi uh, audio commands and not have it talk back to you at all, then you can flip it into speaker two and just not hook up an external speaker. It'll still work. Now the biggest reason I'm not going to have a line by line code coding a long section in this project is the vast majority of the code required to make this run the way you want it to run is coming from an example provided by the vendor. And this is true of most vendors who make Arduino compatible or any like hobby electronics compatible modules. They create libraries and sample code on how to use their module. So you just need to tweak it for your custom application. So in my case, they had sample code on their website of how to control an LED. I added two more LEDs to it. Um, and then I added a whole bunch of custom commands. And that's the part we really need to talk about. So if you go to their website, which I'll link below, or you grab the code from my GitHub, which will also be linked below, then the sample code you'll see will already have bringing in the library, detecting what form of communication it's most likely using based on the board that you're using. And then just make sure in your setup code that whatever devices you have, you initialize those pins like you would with any other Arduino project, but it takes care of the serial.begin. And then it has some specific code for the ASR or sound recognition module um, to begin. And it's best to just leave that alone while you're testing. You can start tweaking that and changing some of the initial parameters once the basics are working, but their sample code and the code I have in the GitHub is going to work fine to get you up and running. The code that we need to focus on, on the custom commands and how to use the audio input in our Arduino project is happening in the loop section of our code. And basically, no matter what the uh, voice command that comes back or if no valid command was received at all, it gets stored in this integer value, CMDID, command ID. And all we have to do is an elaborate switch case a uh, bunch of code to detect what command ID was just issued and perform actions accordingly. And like I said earlier, it comes with 121 pre-built commands. And by looking at their documentation, I can see that if I say, turn on the light, that's gonna be pre-built command ID 103. And if I say turn off the light, that's command ID 104. So the first two rungs I'll put in my code are the case 103, turn all the lights on. 
case 104, turn all the lights off. I'll use that to be very plain and general code. Now next, and again, you just get this from their documentation, I can see that case five is going to be the first case where I set a custom command. So if you remember when I was setting them, the first one I said was all on. And I'm gonna have this be a little different than just turn on the light, which is the pre-built command. And I'm gonna have them do this in sequence. So I'll flip all my lights off, and then in sequence I'll have them start up. And then for all off, I'll basically have it do uh, the same but in reverse. Turn them all on and then in sequence turn them off. And that'll be case six. And for case seven, that's gonna be turn just the blue light on. Case eight, turn just the blue light off. Case nines and 10, same for turning on and off the red light. And then 11 and 12 will be the same for the green light. And then case 13, where I said it was gonna be a light cycle, I'm just gonna program all of the lights to turn on in a progressively uh, slower cycle. So I'll have it like initially really fast and then it'll slow down just for fun to showcase that we can do things like that using Arduino programming. And then the pre-built default section is just if the command ID is not equal to zero, just print what the command ID is equal to so that you can monitor it in a serial window. And that's really all it takes. Go ahead and verify it. Make sure you don't have any errors. Again, if you are doing a custom application, you might consider building a board like this to make sure that your module is, under, uh, is working and you get the basics before you build something elaborate and hook it all up expecting it to work. I think it's super easy to use, but it's still important to get the fundamentals of what you're doing down before you try to do something crazy or you can mess around and find out, it's up to you. All right, let's test every one of those cases we just made and make sure they all work. Hey Gary. How can I help? Turn on the light. Okay. Turn off the light. Okay. All on. Okay. All off. Okay. Okay. Turn on light one. Light, <laughs> light two on. Okay. Light three on. Okay. Light one off. Light two off. Light three off. Okay. Light cycle. Okay, you guys, that is gonna do it for this video on introduction to voice recognition using Arduino. A massive thank you to DF Robot. I reached out to them, let them know I wanted to do this project. They were super enthusiastic and sent me the module. So thank you to them. Be sure to check out their full catalog, not just this sensor, they have a ton of great Arduino and home electronics projects. Be sure to check them out. There'll be a link to their full online website and catalog in the description, as well as this specific sensor, as well as a GitHub with all of the code that I used in this video um, and the DF Robot sample code. Thank you so much for watching. I can't believe we're almost at 10K subscribers on the channel, that is amazing. Massive thank you to Patreon supporters, Dale and Philip, as always. Thank you to everyone who watches my videos, leaves likes and nice comments. Until next time, good luck with your projects, good luck coding, thanks, bye.